Hello, I'm Lynn Jarvis, contributing editor for Across the Fence, and our travel adventure for today begins here in Moscow, Russia, where we have boarded a riverboat that will eventually wind up in St. Petersburg with many stops along the way. I'm pleased that you could explore this somewhat mysterious country along with me, so let's go ashore for a look at Russia's capital city of some 12 million people. We were fortunate to be in Moscow on May 9th, Victory Day in Russia celebrated by a spectacular military parade in Red Square to commemorate the defeat of Nazi Germany and is Russia's most important secular holiday. As soon as the parade is over, thousands crowd the square to commemorate the enormous suffering and loss sustained in World War II and celebrate their army's determination to beat back the Nazi invasion, both cherished parts of the Russian national identity. The country lost an estimated 26 million people, including 8.5 million soldiers. The survivors, men and women now bent with age, with their military uniforms festooned with rows of medals, are now national heroes treated with the honor and respect due them and their fallen comrades. And it was encounters like this that brought tears to many eyes on this day of national celebration for veterans living and dead. What every visitor to Moscow wants to see is St. Basil's Cathedral built in the mid-1500s on orders from Ivan the Terrible. It's located here in Red Square and marks the geometric center of Moscow. It's now owned by the Russian Federation and is a state historical museum. St. Basil's Cathedral is one of the most visited buildings in Russia. As you can see, it's a marvelous piece of architecture with stunning visual appeal. It holds nine separate chapels, one under each of the main domes, with a tall central tower unifying the structure into a single whole. The large Goom department store dominates the eastern side of Red Square. Built in the late 1800s, its glass roof design was unique and by the time of the Russian Revolution in 1917, it contained 1,200 stores. It's now privately owned and is an attractive tourist destination for upscale shopping and a place to relax after a busy day of sightseeing. At the north end of Red Square is the Kremlin, a self-contained city with a multitude of palaces, armories, and churches. The irregular triangle wall of red brick stretches a mile and a half around the center of Russian government and the home of the president. From the Bol Kameni Bridge over the Moscow River, we got a nice view of the Kremlin. The tower to the left marks its southwestern corner, the Great Palace is in the center, and to the right are the Annunciation and Archangel Cathedrals. Close by is Gorky Park, made famous by Martin Cruz Smith's crime novel of the same name, later made into a movie starring William Hurd and Lee Marvin. Gorky first opened in 1928 as an amusement park, and over the years, the rides and grounds fell into disrepair. Just last year, the city gave the park a major overhaul, and the place has been transformed into an eco-friendly recreation area. Even on a cloudy day, it is a popular tourist attraction for tourists and Moscovites of all ages, and beautiful it is along the banks of the Moscova River with many fountains and spring flowers in full bloom. Closer to the river, as part of the Victory Day celebration, some classic war memorabilia was on display. For the younger crowd, it looks like toys to play with, but their parents know better. And just like home, we can all relate to how difficult it is sometimes to get little Oleg to pose for the perfect picture. We're sailing on the Volga River and our next stop will be the historic town of Uglich, famous in Russian history for the beginnings of a power struggle known as the Time of Troubles. We won't be there for a few hours, so let's enjoy some of the scenery along the way while we listen to some typical Russian music provided by Slavitsa, our riverboat entertainers.
Thank you, Slavica. Arriving in Uglich, we were greeted with a traditional hard-crusted Russian bread. Delicious. We were told that Uglich has the best souvenir shops and this being our first opportunity, it was shopping before sightseeing. My traveling companions there are Patty Bacon with the Tuck School of Business, Dartmouth College, Marco Ayella, the video editor for our show today, and Aaron Fulham, a builder from Springfield. And this exquisite nesting doll with blue and white enamel paint was purchased by Johanna Jingris from Montreal, who works for the Canadian National Railway. And here are examples of some of the lovely arts and crafts we saw at the Oglich Market. During the reign of Ivan the Terrible, he gave the town to his only brother, Yuri, and upon Ivan's death, his three-year-old son Dmitri was sent here in 1548 to be with his uncle. Seven years later, the boy was murdered which precipitated the power struggle known as the Time of Troubles. People were led to believe the boy was still alive and supported three false Dmitris who tried to steal the Moscovite throne causing havoc in the country for nearly 20 years. On the spot where little Dimitri was murdered, this lovely church was built, known as the Church of St. Dimitri on the Blood. And as a farewell gift, five local singers performed for us. What a perfect way to end our visit to this historic and beautiful town on the Volga River. Another interesting place to visit is Yaroslavl, a World Heritage Site at the confluence of the Vogel and Kotorosl rivers. It was founded by Yaroslavl the Wise in 1010 when he climbed the shore somewhere near here and saw that these highlands offered the perfect vantage point to watch for invaders. Since the city is just four hours from Moscow by train, it is a popular getaway for Russians. This is the Nevsky Chapel built in 1892. Also, for thousands of riverboat tourists like us who can enjoy a beautiful May day in this historic city, or just steal a quiet moment to look at the Volga River framed by the rebirth of spring. In contrast, the downtown is busy with shoppers buying plants for their spring gardens. I was surprised at the similarity of what they were buying to the plants that we grow here in Vermont. But getting fresh meat is another story. In Yaroslavl, it comes right off the farm, hand delivered by the owner. Just look at the variety you have to choose from, and the place was spotless without a fly to be seen. In doing research for our show today, I am always impressed by the Russian people's ability to come back from adversity. This is the Cathedral of the Assumption, seen through the war memorial with its eternal flame. Completely destroyed during the Soviet regime, the people of Yaroslavl decided to rebuild the church and the monumental task was completed in five years and it reopened only two years ago. And we were fortunate to be here just as a group of local school children arrived to honor the fallen men and women whose heroism made the rebuilding of this church possible. For those of you who don't know, Yaroslavl has been Burlington's sister city since 1989, and I asked Irina Novakova, chair of the Russian American Association, how it happened. One of the stories I've heard from uh, Senator Bernie Sanders. He said that he himself, with his wife and some friends, they came to Yaroslavl on their honeymoon after wedding. And here they met with the group of Russian people, of course with the mayor of Yaroslavl, and they decided to make Sister City program. That's how it started. And then there were many exchanges, and they were devoted to people meeting people. And this is people's diplomacy, what it's all about. 
and uh, we really want to make people uh, from the other side, um, people over the ocean, to know how we live, what we do, what we are, to invite them and to come and visit our friends uh, in Burlington, Vermont. And so all our uh, organization and all the process in the organization is devoted to different exchanges, to cultural exchange exchanges, to educational programs, business people come and meet each other. And the idea was to make, to bring more information to both sides, to build bridges of friendship. Very well said, Irina. And Burlington, Vermont, USA is proud to be the sister city of Yaroslavl, Russia. And thank you for talking to us. Thank you. You're very welcome to Yaroslavl. We can't leave Yaroslavl without a stop to admire the Church of St. Elijah the Prophet, a 17th century architectural treasure. Inside this ornate building, the art treasures came alive with music performed by these local singers, a nice conclusion to our time here in Yaroslavl. We have arrived at Kishi Island in the Republic of Karelia. Churches were built here as early as the 1400s and the island is now an open air museum with more than 80 historic structures. The most famous being the Church of Transfiguration with 22 domes and it's now a World Heritage Site. While many of the buildings on Kishi have stood for centuries, it was not until the 1960s that the Soviets transformed the island into one of Russia's most popular tourist attractions. As hard as it is to believe, no nails were used for the construction of these buildings. Instead, pieces of wood were notched together to hold the beams and planks together. The structure looks even more impressive if you believe the local legend that it was built by one man with a single ax. Upon affixing the last shingle, he hurled his ax into the lake with the words, there was not and will be not another one to match it. Right he was, as the church still remains the tallest wooden building of northern Russia. Aaron, being a builder, was fascinated with the place, especially the 30,000 shingles needed to cover the 22 cupolas. They are made of aspen wood that gleams in the morning sun and night moonlight with subtle color changes that resemble silver as clouds roll by. Stepping into the church takes you back in time as you gaze up to the wide plank boards set in place almost 300 years ago. In the small chapel is a fine collection of icons from throughout Russia used to frame this historic brass prayer candle holder. The island is home to the oldest wooden church in Russia, St. Lazarus Church, which according to legend was built by the monk Lazarus who died in 1391. Other relics from the past include wooden houses, windmills, and traditional Russian bathhouses close to the lake shore. Since being animal lovers, we were pleased to come upon this Kishi cat who knew right away he wanted his chin rubbed. And with that heavy coat of thick yellow fur, we knew right away it had been a very cold winter here on the island. We have sailed more than 900 miles along the rivers of Russia and I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen along the way. Tomorrow, we'll come to the historic city of St. Petersburg and I hope you can join us for that. For Across the Fence, I'm Lynn Jarvis leaving Lake Onega in Russia. Thank you for watching. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.